All right, guys, uh, this is Kevin, and on the um, on the call today, I've got Tommy Swindle and Andy Peck. Uh, Tommy owns a studio in Arab, Alabama, a little town called Arab, Alabama, and I mentioned this to somebody the other day, and they said it's the best name ever, uh, and Tommy has a story about they misnamed the town, and they went with the, the wrong name. We'll get into that later, Tommy, but it's a small town, um, yeah. with, um, and uh, <clears throat> and Tommy keeps that place hopping with people from all over the uh, the north northern part of Alabama. And Andy Peck has got a studio in Indiana. Uh, tell me the name of the town again, Andy. Well, it's right outside of South Bend. It's called Mishawaka, Indiana. And that's a Mishawaka. name. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and uh, Andy keeps his studio. Uh, we were just talking a minute ago, and Andy's got a ton of work. So w the win today for me is to, is to find out uh, on behalf of uh, for everybody here, what um, what's the magic sauce you guys are doing, or if it's a lot of little steps, <clears throat> we'll get into that. But first of all, let's say hey to everybody that's on the call. Uh, let's see, uh, Tony Colon is here, Danny Miller is here, uh, Michael Rafters here, Rolf Wires here, Merrill Bradshaw one two three checking one two three. Uh, so hey guys, we're gonna uh, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions, and I'm gonna keep an eye on this comment section, and if you guys have a follow up question. Uh, pop it in there and we'll, we'll get it in. But the win today is to just talk to these guys about uh, what they're doing in their studio. I've got a few questions here that I want to ask. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be really casual, just a bunch of, uh, of friends talking about one subject, and that is how you run your uh, small home studio. I know some of you guys are just interested in mixing. You're not interested in getting clients, and that's cool. You still probably will learn some stuff here. So uh, if you're trying to get clients and you're trying to keep clients and things like that, keep them happy, these guys are obviously doing it right. So, okay. So, guys, <clears throat> um, let me hear just one at a time. Let me hear just a brief synopsis of your why you started a studio and how you started a studio. Tommy, let's start with you. So uh, I guess 40 years into this is kind of where I am now. I've, I've spent a fair amount of time in a lot of studio commercial facilities. Started with a bedroom studio because I wrote a lot of songs. That was 25 years ago. So I guess the vision's always been to have, you know, a separate building with a, a, a fairly nice, you know, project type studio capable of doing a lot of things. And so finally, we realized that goal in 2015. So we bought a building, and, you know, outfitted it for recording. And that's the vision, you know, in a nutshell. That's what I wanted to do. And so far, we've been fortunate enough to be able to make that vision a reality. Mm -hmm. So you, you built a small, you bought a small, cutest mm -hmm. little, small, uh, it's a tiny house, tiny studio. It's a tiny house, uh, that's and, right. Yeah. And, and, and we're still working on some video for that. But uh, yeah. just tell them the, real quickly how you got that. So uh, my wife and I do some real estate and uh, just kind of ran across a couple buildings in this little town, uh, Arab, which is, you know, where I had lived for 25 years. And uh, we just bought the building. Some folks had moved to Florida and it, an opportunity presented itself, so we bought it. And then it was just a shell. And I thought, man, would this not be so cool to outfit it with some booths and a little control room? And so away uh, we went on it. It took about a year to, to finish it out. So me and a contractor friend of mine uh, built it. And then uh, I guess, you know, there's this need where I live in this North Alabama area where uh, people that sing and do music, they want a place to go that they feel comfortable. That's not too far away. So that opportunity has been around because uh, I live in North Alabama. Kevin, you know, in North Alabama, uh, the, the gospel music capital, because there's singers on every corner. <laughs> <You Yeah. know? laughs> so I don't know if that's just happenstance or what, but that being the case, we have a lot of people that just, they need a good place to record their material. And, uh, and so I guess evolution's a part of that. We try to I try to have the best time I can afford and uh, make sure that when you walk in the room, you know, get a sound that's comfortable with anywhere else you can go. Um, cool. you know, I'm a couple hours from Nashville, so it's handy, I guess, for people who work with me um, mm -hmm. to do that. So, 
Yeah, that's cool. Hey, uh, okay, so Andy, tell me about how you started your studio. And I know you have you were in another building when I saw you before, and I think you've changed buildings now, right? So tell us yeah. how you started your studio. Well, I was a graduate of a recording program in the mid-'80s. Much like Tommy, I've been in this for almost 40 years. And uh, I got offered some inter internships when I got out of school, but they were this was in San Francisco, California, and you can't work for free and live in San Francisco. It, it's in, virtually impossible. Um, yeah. And I moved back to my hometown of South Bend and just started my own studio, started in a basement of my house and kind of outgrew that after my wife threatened to throw me out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> so I kind of grew into several, it's been in, I've had probably seven or eight different locations now over the years. Um, Kevin was in my last studio that was in a, a little town called Niles, Michigan in a funky old building. And uh, about a year and a half ago, I recently moved it to Mishawaka, Indiana. I own a music store also, and um, so I put it right next to my music store, get a lot of feed from that, and uh, that's pretty much where I'm at today. That's cool. So one of the things that I just got from this conversation is, um, and I don't, I don't know how related they are, but Tommy, one of the things I got from you is like capitalize on what is local around you. Like if you're if you've got a lot of gospel groups around you and a lot of bluegrass groups around you, then try to get into that market and get people in your studio. And Andy, what I heard from you is, uh, you know, you've got a studio, so you've got musicians coming in your place all the time. There's always that point of contact where you can you can uh, get around people and lure them into your lair, your studio <laughs> lair. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's cool. In Mishawaka, Indiana, South Bend, there's not there's a ton of basement studios, but there's no real professional type studios. And at the it's sounding a little arrogant, mine's a little more professional than most. And I have a lot of really nice gear, and uh, that draws a lot of people in. Yeah, once, cool. Once they see it, they're hooked. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's let's talk. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about this. How do you? Um, Andy, we'll just continue with you right here. When you, um, how do you get new clients in the studio? I know you're you're busy now, but uh, if you were brand new into the town, knowing what you know about your town, what would you do to get new people into your studio? Well, you know, I'd, I'd go back to old Kevin Ward, who used to tell me, you know, you got to get out there, go see bands, offer them some free recording time, put a demo reel together, um, just network. You know, I. I didn't start off with a million clients. It just word gets around and you build a reputation and eventually they, they come to you. I don't advertise a lot. Um, I, and I turn down a lot and at, at the risk of sounding arrogant again, again uh, that's not what I mean, but I just have a limited amount of time and, and too many clients and no other competition. Mm -hmm. That's cool. What about you, Tommy? It's more mouth, honestly. Uh, I don't really advertise a lot. You know, I've got a website and a Facebook page, but uh, like Andy, it's just um, people that will come here that say, man, check this guy out. You know, he'll get you right. He'll do what he says. And stuff coming out of there. So uh, I find that word of mouth keeps me in business. I mean, it's you have to you have to have that good reputation. You know, people have to say, hey, go to this guy. And if they do that and you're consistent in your effort, you'll be turning business away. At least that's mm, been my that's cool. experience. Okay, so here's what I heard from that. I don't know. You guys are crystal clear about this, in my opinion. Um, you have to, it's like, you have to do it for a while. You're not going to get busy right off the bat. You have to that's get correct. some word of mouth going. Yeah. You have to. You have to have happy clients which we're going to talk about in a second and they have to tell their friends and they come to you, but neither one of you guys do any like email marketing or advertising or anything like that. Do you? It's all. Uh, Andy, right? hit it. Andy hit it. Sometimes, you know, when you're started, do it free. Uh, I used to do this thing where I, um, some, some person or some group or whatever come in. I've got to get them in the studio. If I can get them in my room, more often than not, the walk out country. Yeah, but for people that don't know, people that don't know you, I've done this thing where you know, let me record one song. Yeah, I've done that I'll too. pay for the time, and if you're not happy, we're all good. And more often than not, that turns into a full project. I've rarely seen yeah. that fail. Yeah, I but have you used do the have trick it before. 
sometimes you just have to throw out that loss leader or whatever to prove what you can do. If they don't know you, that's, you know, you got to invest in yourself, and that's a good way yeah. to do it. That's good. Well put. Anything you want to add to that? No, I, I you pretty much, <laughs> we're a lot yeah. of sounds like. Cause one, of, one, of one of the things that I have, the, yeah. sorry, I talked over, the, over you there. No, you're good. Oh, you're good. Anyway, what I was hearing was, uh, you know, one of the things that I have told people, I have told people, is that right, to do before is like, um, it's the it's the new mic trick. You know, it's like if you hear a good singer and you know they don't have a good record and they haven't recorded and maybe they haven't really even envisioned themselves in the studio before, you can say right. something like, hey, I've got a new microphone and I know it's going to sound amazing on you. Would you mind coming by the studio on Tuesday night around, you know, after work at six o'clock? I just want to see how it sounds on you. Let them hear sure. the mic on you. It could be any mic. Uh, or you, you could say, I've got a new mic. You could say, I've got the perfect mic for you. And then let them feel that uh, there's something uh, very uh, addictive about being in a studio and about hearing yourself oh, yeah. back in the best light and you guys uh, are obviously doing putting people in their best light it's just a good strategy to you know to get the ball rolling it takes momentum and what i'm learning is that you. when you are in the core of nashville and you've got clients built in around you like i had for 20 years and then you go and do something different for a few years and you right. come back that momentum is gone and it's taken um right. it's it's going to take a while uh, if if I want to do that, you know, that every day in the studio, as busy as you guys are, if I want to do that, there's going there's a certain amount of things that I have to do. And some of the things that I'm doing uh, is going to lunch with people, uh, mentioning, you know, one thing I could be better at is social media and all that kind of stuff. I mean, just to let people because I have noticed that when people see your studio and see you working in your studio, it triggers something in their brain that says, I need to call them. And, uh, and I'll bet, oh, yeah. you know, they can mix my record or whatever. So just another side strategy there. Um, so here, I'm sorry, go ahead, Tommy. Well, there's just something, I don't know if magical is the word, but there's something about momentum. Uh, I've had my wife ask me, can you not slow down? And I'm like, no, nope. because <laughs> if you've got momentum, you can't really afford to slow down because it's funny, they... The electric company and the water company, they never lose my address. They're consistently <laughs> on target with getting them bucks every single month. So I have to work. <laughs> so you can't slow down. Just go. But you hit it. It's it's all about the, whatever that thing is, right? You know, yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about, you know, because this model that you're talking about doesn't work very well unless you have clients coming back um, time after time and being kind of on fire about what you did for them that they're telling everybody else. And like, if you just go to Tommy's or you just go to Andy's studio, here's, you know, I promise you're going to win it. So tell me one at a time, Tommy, we'll start with you. Um, tell me something that you do uh, besides putting out a good product. That's a given. Something that you may do for your clients to give them that, like, okay, uh, I, you know, Tommy or Andy, they're worth telling people about. Tell me something that you may do to get people to to talk about you outside your studio and get people in. Well, I guess in in my world, um, one of the things that's had value is, you know, I do understand harmony and and you know, what it takes to to make a group of singers, I guess, kind of come together. With that, I work a lot with clients before we ever hit the red light. And so we'll talk about the parts and are you ready? Are you really ready to go in here? But that's just, that's something I don't typically charge for. I guess there are places that do. Uh, but I think what it does, it, there's this wall. Uh, it's kind of invisible, but you'll see it break down. But once they get used to sharing that intimacy of working on that level with you they just naturally want to come back you know they're, they're like hey this dude is for real he's working with me and not just charging me you know to get my money um i said the relationship thing that you just really can't put a price on. but for me that seems to be of great value that's good andy what about you 
Well, I, I agree with what Tommy said. I'm truly passionate about recording. Even to this day, mm -hmm. after all this time, I still wake up every morning and look forward to getting in the studio. Um, I go the extra mile, whatever it takes. I shut the clock off when I have to. I, uh, I over-deliver. There's no such thing as a rough mix in my book. I, when somebody wants a rough mix, I'll spend two hours doing a rough mix. Um, yeah. Whatever it takes. Uh, I just, uh, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make the client happy. And whether it's a hundred revisions, which I've done, and uh, just whatever it takes. That's cool. So, yeah. uh, so here's, the, I'm, I'm doing it. I didn't mean to do this, but I'm doing a summary after every one of your things because I'm sitting here taking notes. So, Tommy, you're saying, and, and I agree with both of you on this, and I've done these strategies too. Pre-production is very valuable to people to know that they are that they not only came in your studio and it's not a uh, transactionary sort of thing. It's a relationship building sort of thing when you take interest in what they're doing and try to shine them gently, uh, shine the best light on them. Pre-production is a good way to do that. Um, and then... Right. Uh, Andy, I heard from you saying that, you know, not the pre-production, but actually the post-production pre-mix is where you kind of over-deliver, like rough mixes. Make sure that your rough mixes sound good, because if you just throw it together at the 11th hour, then it doesn't sound that great. Yeah. They're going to have a chance to go back and go, is this really as good as I think it is? And then they're going to let a friend hear it, and they're not going to be impressed with it because it's not a great rough mix. So the strategy there is a good rough mix. So th those are brilliant, uh, brilliant things that that uh, um, I wouldn't have been able to sum sum up unless you guys had mentioned it. It's really, really good. Anything before we move on from that? Okay, oh. I. I I had a question on here. Are you using social media and ads and email marketing? And we've already talked about that. We're not really, you're not using any of that. It's all kind of word of mouth and momentum or the magic words there. Okay. So really, really quick. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. Yeah. Uh, an example about paying for advertisement. I had, I was approached a uh, year before last by a magazine. And it's only five hundred dollars. We'll do you know these blurbs, and we'll do it a month, and the success is going to be phenomenal. So I paid five hundred bucks for that, and I got a quantity of zero leads. And this was a you know a magazine that has you know one thousand subscribers because it just didn't work for me. You know that may not be the case mm -hmm. for Andy, but in my world, zero. Just yeah, didn't work. yeah. yeah. It does. It doesn't work. Even, yeah. even Facebook ads and stuff like that for me don't really seem to work. It's yeah. word of mouth. It's just, I don't know why. Uh, it they just don't work for me. Well, if I can continue to summarize what you guys are saying, Tommy, you were dropping out a little bit, but I I got the the high points, yeah, I'm so and that is that's okay. You you were saying that you uh, actually bought magazine advertising and got zero leads from it, and Andy, you were saying Not that you thing. never that. Facebook thing. So I think what I'm hearing too is that I know I think there's a there's a little bit of a red flag that goes up when a studio has to advertise <clears throat> because um, I think your Thanks. skill, your studio, and the product that you deliver uh, create super fans who bring up their friends in to your studio. And when you have to advertise uh, for normal session work, it kind of throws a red flag as to why are you having to advertise? You know. Uh, and uh, maybe that's why there were no no uh, responses on your ads. So uh, it could be. Mm -hmm. I, I think you want presence like a Facebook. You know, I have a Facebook page for the studio, mm -hmm. and I have a website. But those are there. You want to check them out. You know, I'm not blatantly promoting that all the time. So you make a, a great one. Mm -hmm. I think the best advertisement it's is there. just seeing is. Yeah. Is people seeing that you're busy? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. When I get low, I just take on a project that I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna quote you on that. <laughs> uh, when I get slow, <laughs> I just take on a project I don't want to do. That's priceless, Andy. That's awesome. Uh, uh, Danny Miller says, yeah. "Do you have all kinds of hardware, or is it mainly computer gear in the box? Uh, and are the cost of hardware?" worth it in the on the bottom line andy i've got a ton of hardware um i grew up in the analog world to me hardware is where it's at although i do have a million plugins too it seems yeah. like i my hardware more than i do my my software I, 
I'm probably the wrong person to ask because I have a hookup with, with gear. Um, a lot of times I buy it for a lot less than what it actually sells for. Um, mm-hmm. But um, it, it, if you can afford it and if you can pay cash for it and justify it, buy it. If you can't, don't. Don't buy it on credit. That's that's my motto, to pay for it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, for me. I hear that. Tommy, what about you? I've got a lot of hardware. You know, you know um, and I think it's it's good for a lot of reasons with that front end that I've got, you know, it's it's like nothing that I've ever heard in my plug in. And I like that and it works for me. But I do have a lot of plug ins. So I think it's a mixture of both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I can just add to that, um, there's a fine line between uh, I think that it's perfectly possible, like I've got an Apollo uh which has four mm-hmm. mic pre's in it and four more inputs on it, eight outputs. And I would feel comfortable doing a vocal session on that unit. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah. at the same time, at the same time, I don't want people to come in and I've got it set up on a little um, be, a little card table either. Uh, it's because first impressions is something. And I think that if you have something that's, uh, and you know, this is something I need to work on, something that looks organized and well-kept mm-hmm. and very well used, I think people are going to, uh, get to the next level with you. You know, if you, if you, if you walk in there and you're, you know, have to turn off your, your gaming software and, and close down your, you know, whatever software on your computer so that you can open up your program. Um, people are, might start to second guess whether you're serious about this at the I, same time. Yeah, you don't yeah. like Andy said, you don't want to spend too much money just trying to impress people. Andy, you were saying something. Well, I was just going to say that there is a certain wow factor that people expect when they walk in your studio i have a console and and i use it a lot but i think somebody's first impression when they walk in the control room and they see that console and they see all you know the rupert new gear and the apis and and the 1176s and stuff like that I, to me for a professional studio that's there's a certain importance to that there really is yeah good point um, let's see. And Andy had, a, I mean, Danny had a follow up. He said, just being honest and delivering a great product is the best way to go. I think that sums, that sums it up right there. You know, just like Absolutely. these guys are, are, are delivering a great product. They're, they're treating their clients well. Um, they're giving their clients something to talk about to other people, whether that be a rough mix or the attention and time that you did kind of off the clock. Um, I think that's uh, those are those are good nuggets, guys. Um, so yeah, I think there's a there's a lot of uh, if you have any more comments, uh, we're in the last couple of minutes of this uh, conversation. So jump in there if you have any questions, comments, follow up questions. But um, yeah, I think the the bottom line is just to treat people well. Get you know get people in the studio. I, I think that if you do good work, it's not going to be hard to get follow up people. Uh, and get them to talk about other people and then treating them well when they're in the studio, giving them something to talk about. And then, you know, when the new person comes in, make sure that you don't let down your, no matter how busy you get, you don't let down your, um, the thing that got them in the door. You, you keep giving that to them even more, right? That rhymed and didn't even mean to do it. <laughs> um, even if it costs you extra time at, at the back end or wherever, you know, yeah. you can't ever let up let down your guard you just got to be building all the time yeah i think think, uh go ahead andy i was just gonna say gear comes with time and experience but it does it's the product that you hand off to them you know yeah get them in the door but if you don't know how to use it or if it sounds like crap they ain't coming back right yeah (laughs) um i think i think i can uh, I'd like to end with a little story that kind of circles around what you guys are talking about, adds it into a little bow or, or adds a bow on top. Um, I was doing uh, a session uh, when I first got to Nashville and a lot of uh, there, there are musicians who will drop your session at the drop of a hat and go with a better paying session, um, which is kind of irritating when you've got, you know, when you've got a lot of, when you sold that musician to the artist and you're saying, you know, so-and-so is playing on your record and then he drops off at the last minute, it makes them feel slighted and that their product is not as important. So anyway, there was a, a big producer that came to town and he was handpicking, cherry picking uh, musicians across 
uh, a bunch of sessions. And this one guy wouldn't bail on this on the little session that he had. And he said, uh, he said, come on, man, this is such and such artist. It's going to be on the radio. There's video and there's a lot of potential there. And he said, no, I'm not going to do it. And they said, why? How much is this guy paying you? And he said about fifty thousand dollars a year. So I think one of the things that we need to do is adjust that it's not just this client. It's just not this thirty, forty, fifty dollar an hour or a three hundred dollar project or five hundred dollar project. It can be fifty, sixty, hundred thousand dollars over a lifetime. So you have to start thinking of people as not uh, disposable uh, sessions, but um, long term friends and clients. Would you Would you agree with that, guys? Yeah, absolutely. I remember when that happened to you. As a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's not pleasant. So no doubt. Uh, yeah. And I'm not calling any musicians out. I know that's kind of a, that's kind of built into the culture in Nashville for some reason. Uh, but I just thought it was a good example of, um, of not thinking of it being like, who's going to give me the most money today. And instead who's going to be the best client. Who's the people that I like to work with on the, on the daily, on the, on the monthly, on the yearly. Who's that person that I like doing projects with? Because that, uh, I think finding people, um, you know, Andy, you were, you said something really cool. You know, uh, when I get busy or when I get uh, slow, I do things that I don't necessarily want to do. I think there's a big value in uh, not only being busy, but being busy with people that you actually enjoy working with. Yeah. And I, I have a, a group of people that I, you know, studio musicians that I use as much as I possibly can. And uh, we just enjoy each other's company. I know what I get out of them, and they're they're professionals. <laughs> Danny Miller said, "I guess that Tommy has a new client." <laughs> 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 That's funny, Danny. That is and then funny. Tony, uh, and then Tony laughed at it. Okay, so I don't know if Tommy's coming back or not, but uh, I feel pretty satisfied that uh, we've we've covered some nuggets here today. It's going to help people who are running a small studio to not only get clients, but keep clients and, uh, and become busier and busier. So, Hey, Andy, thanks for, thanks for coming today. Oh, and it uh, looks like, looks like Tommy's, Tommy's coming on here. When we add him to the stream, we should just leave. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he lost. So anyway, that's all I have to say about Tommy. And, oh, there you are. I'm sorry, Tommy, you're back. <laughs> yeah. Now I, I uh, heard you. <laughs> sorry about uh, that. It was great. And then it just vanished off. Yeah, did you hear Danny say, I guess Tommy has a new client? <laughs> that's why you left the call. <laughs> uh, Go ahead, do some well, pre-production. That's it. That's it. I enjoy it. Yeah. Andy's real nice to meet you. Yeah, it was yeah. very nice to meet you, too. I yeah, we'll, to we'll all coffee. get together here one day soon, I hope. So, hey, uh, real quick, just, just for the sake of, because I, I got this information, um, this is uh, the way you can get in touch with Andy. Uh, Dirty White Couch Studio at yahoo.com. I think I spelled everything right. So just reach out to, to Andy if you want to, maybe uh, you're in town, you want a studio tour or something like that, or sure. he's probably too busy to do it. But, <laughs> best but email, reach out best to him. email he, address he, ever. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and then Tommy, Tommy's got a Gmail address, uh, yeah. tswindle zero at gmail.com. If you're ever in Arab, I'm sure he would love for you to buy him lunch one day. Or coffee or something like that. I would love it. I would love it. All right. 